And I'm going to shade it down a little bit because it's not that light. Okay, now I think the deer is really getting there. And now I'm going to soften it. You know, you get those mountains that go up and down, and, and so those areas that go down, they appear a bit darker. Hey, I'm Layla. Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so much for all of the wonderful comments and messages that you are sending me. And over and over again, you keep asking me to create more of the very calm ASMR style videos. Today's tutorial is going to be another one of those very calm and relaxing follow along drawing videos. Today we will use graphite on paper to create the sketch. So again, I hope you get to relax and enjoy. So today I will just use graphite on paper. This is sort of like a light um, card kind of a paper, which can also be used for watercolor, but it is hot, uh, rolled, hot pressed, so it's quite smooth. I'm going to start with a 2B pencil, and if you would like to know more information about all of the materials I'm using, I have a separate video on all of the materials, so I will link it in the corner. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just really roughly sketch an area which I actually will use for my drawing. I'm not using a ruler, I'm just sort of a freehand sketching it. This is a bit off. There, that's better. So as you can see, it's not going to be a very large picture, but if you are following along, feel free to make it as large as you'd like. Mm -hmm. Next, I'm going to divide my picture into the major areas. So I'm going to mark the cross on the front, and then that really hazy landscape in the distance, wherever it is, it looks like maybe some mountains or forest or something like that on the back. And then I'm going to place the animal, just like with anything else. And again, I have a video on that as well that I'm going to link on the side there. So just look on the corner. Um, I'm going to start with some simple shapes. So I'm going to put this elongated oval and then another sort of shape there and that's the back of his body and so now I'm going to mark his face or his head and then the chest and then the legs and we can't see the legs really well because the grass blocks it so no need to make things up. I don't remember exactly how the legs of the deer go, so it's better to stick to the picture and go with what you see rather than make things up. Unless, of course, it's, it's surrealism or something like this, then you can feel free to do whatever you'd like. Okay, so then we've got the antlers and the ears. So always start with a vague shape. If something's incorrect, you can always go back and tweak it a little bit. Alright, so for antlers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the main line through. And then add the tweaks. I don't know whatever they're called. Again, any experts on deers, if you've got any interesting facts. Please comment down below, it will be interesting to find out. Ok, 
Okay, so I'll mark this down. Now I'm actually looking at this picture and I think I might make it a little bit bigger because this extra paper is allowing me to do that. That's the bonus of, you know, leaving that extra space. Yeah, I think that sort of gives them a bit more space to breathe. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to mark some of the specific things for this particular deer, like the shape of the eyes, where they are located. I'm not shading or anything like this. I'm just marking those things through so that when the time comes for me to start shading, I can see exactly what I need to do and where. So, and then there's some nostrils. Have any of you ever farmed deers? Because I know there are lots of deer farms all over the world. And if you have, do you have any interesting fun stories? So now I'm going to go into shading because I don't really want to spend more time on details that are going to be worked over anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pencil, which is just pure graphite. Again, that video that I was talking about um, that I'm linking on the side there, it'll cover the use of all of these things and how to use them and what they're for and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to really, really softly And I'm going to use a smudge stick. And that just to create that sort of a really foggy, hazy look. The reason why I like to start with the background is because first of all it sets the mood for what's going to be happening there and also I'm not so worried about going over and smudging the subject as well just to tidy up a little bit on the outside we'll do a better job of it once everything is finished but I do like to keep the work quite neat even while I'm working. Okay, so my next step would be to use a softer pencil and shade the area. So because I know that I will smudge this completely, what I'm doing is I'm trying to shade it but without leaving any specific movement or any specific marks. I'm just trying to get it to the stage of darkness that I would like to see it in. Okay, so now I'm going to smudge this. Sort of a, has an irregular border as well. And now I'm going to go and work on the actual animal, on the creature, the deer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the side so that I'm not smudging anything. If you can't, say for example you're working on a larger um, artwork, then maybe placing a piece of paper so you can rest your hand um, can be very useful. This is sort of a happening where the deer is kind of standing against the light and it also looks like it's sort of a, almost like a twilight or I don't know, sort of a darker in the day. 
kind of a situation. There isn't that much detail that's visible on the actual deer. I mean, you can still see his eyes quite well, you know, but it's mainly the main way how we can tell that it's deer is because of its outline, really, not because of any other details. So I'm going to try and keep it very similar and very simple. That's why I think this drawing would be pretty suitable for beginners as well, because you don't really need to get into too much detail. You know, you can just sort of get away with some overall shades. It's quite funny how that bottom lip is quite light, actually. And I'm keeping my marks and pencil strokes along with the with the direction of the fur. And this part here it seems to be quite a bit darker. I'm not sure if it's because of the light, the way the light falls. But I think it's uh, maybe the shade of the fur a little bit different as well. I have a feeling it's both, I think. The fur here is a bit lighter, but also the way that it catches light. And it gets really dark here, where the legs are. And then again, the back of the deer is a little bit light, and then we've got the darker shade just going down a little bit. Okay, now before I go any darker, I am going to use my smudge stick. I'll use this smaller one and I will start on the top here. Okay, so now I'm going to go over it again and I'm going to darken some areas that are extra dark and those areas are just over here by the antlers. It's really dark. And it sort of goes just around the mouth here. The ears are a bit darker. And now these areas, I'm not sure, I think these are his cheeks. He's got big cheeks. And then of course, that neck. So a bit of skin that's covered with, by the fur. And so it actually looks even bigger. Here it's almost black, this area. It's really, really dark. And the belly here as well. It's quite a bit of shadow. And now I'm going to go back in. I'll actually use a larger smudge stick now. Because I'll just go over very lightly. have a look at the antlers. They kind of all got smudged when I was working in the background. So I'm going to redraw them again. I'm also going to go and shade the eyes a little bit at first and then I'll Add more, and now I'm just going to go and 
Okay, and now I've got a mechanical pencil and I'm going to add more details and more shadows the way that they appear on the original photograph. And also there are little sort of bumps. And I'm also looking very carefully at the image and finding where the dark areas on the ears are so I can depict them as well. In some areas the antlers get really really dark and in some they seem to be quite a bit softer. Work on the eyes, so now I'm just a bit more detail. Don't see any reflections or anything like this, they're just dark. A bit more definition around the nose and the mouth. And I'm going to shade it down a little bit because it's not that light. The area around the eyes seem to be a little bit lighter. And you can see some strands of the fur that are just protruding on the sides there. You can kind of see a little bit of texture of the fur there, but if you don't want to, if you're following along and you don't really want to get into too much detail, you don't really have to, because it is so smudgy and so soft. Okay, now I think the deer is really getting there. I'm just going to go and softly with this little smudge stick just soften things up a little bit. And now now I'm going to get rid of this little line and I'm just going to lift a tiny little bit just above the eyes and there okay so the deer is coming along nicely but what I want to do is I want to get some of the areas that I think are really dark the darkest that I can just to keep quite a bit of the contrast going But there at the top. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, softly shade this area, and again, I'm going to use this pencil. So you see how within this instance, rather than like you know comparing to all of these other areas, I'm going up and down 
and the reason for that is because there will be a direction to this area because there'll be like little grass bits that are growing up so it makes sense even if, even though I'm going to smudge it but it makes sense to go in that same direction and now I'm going to soften it This area at the front is actually darker than that area over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going and keep adding more and more layers until I'm satisfied with the shade that it is. Is I want to lighten this area a little bit just so that it's a bit easier for me to create that contrast. Especially closer to this area here. that's enough and then I can always um, remove more if I need to whenever you're drawing anything make sure that you're always comparing shades so for example something that you might start shading might seem quite dark but when you've done more of the drawing you will realize that oh it looks like it needs a bit more in terms of shade or vice versa sometimes you think oh it's not dark enough but then well it's too light and then you have to add more so it can go either way. Now we get time for softening and you see how in this area here I'm not trying to completely blend everything I'm just creating a little bit more of the softness and so what I'm going to do now so I'm going to go for a 9B pencil. I suggest that you use the darkest pencil that you have on hand. And I'm going to go over some areas and darken them even more. Because obviously this is a photograph of a natural landscape. And you know, you get those mountains that go up and down and and so those areas that go down, they appear a bit darker. So this is what I'm working on.
I had again. Just a little bit. And now I'm going to go with the mechanical pencil and I'm going to I'm going to bring out these high little separate sort of strands of grass. I'm gonna go back in with my dark pencil and now I'm going to really darken the area that I want to be quite dark just to create a bit more contrast to that background. Going back into that bump. I'm quite happy with this. All I'm going to do now is just to lighten that top part a little bit more because I just want to have more contrast between the sky and the grass. But you don't have to if you're working on this. It's up to you how dark you want it to be or how light. Whenever you're drawing something, you know, there's always, don't be afraid to remove stuff, you know, apply it back on. Just because you've laid it down, it doesn't mean it has to stay that way. You know, you've got the control to change something that you want. Just going a little bit more carefully around the deer now because the deer is finished, so we don't want to you know go in and just 
smudge everything with also um, creating clouds in a specific way you can bring attention to something like for example if you create your clouds more horizontal sort of in horizontal lines then what you will have is more attention to the landscape so the landscape is going to be pushed back and the deer is going to be a little bit separate from it now the way I'm doing the clouds is that there's almost like this sort of a area that kind of is like pointing at the deer now what that does is it makes the deer like the king of the picture all the attention is on us because everything's pointing at it and the thing is it doesn't have to be like something really strong really dark or really light it can be just the shape the formation of the clouds that sort of it's not even very strong you know there's just a little bit of the light here and a little bit of the shade there but it definitely creates that effect having those clouds up there I can't remember who said it but there was a saying um, if you want people to look at a certain object on your painting make sure you paint a person next to it pointing at it then everyone's gonna look there <laughs> so I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now okay guys so here it is I'm just going to sign it and um, you see now I've cleaned up all the edges if you would like to know the best and the coolest and the quickest way to clean things up like that please go and check out my patreon account because I've done a little video on how to do that it doesn't take much uh, time but it's it's a really cool um, hack that i think you might like i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to check out my patreon page where for just eight dollars a month you'll get to see all the extra videos with more tips and tricks and also relaxing follow along videos in russian and english give this video a thumbs up if you liked it don't forget to subscribe and press notification bell for more free videos here on YouTube. I hope you have a lovely day. And as always, thank you for drawing with me.